All right, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, series of uh, video lectures and labs in, on uh, machine learning for cybersecurity. Uh, I'm Professor Ricardo Calix at uh, Purdue University Northwest. Um, so this course, uh, you know, it's a, this is a course on machine learning with you know, applying the methodologies of machine learning to cybersecurity problems. So you can see here, uh, this course covers, you know, fundamental topics of machine learning like uh, deep learning and TensorFlow, um, and several algorithms and applications to malware, intrusion detection, uh, IoT detection, phishing, uh, and, and such ideas. All right, so, Basically, before I get to the slides, I just want to give some information on where you can find everything. So obviously, I've created this website. Uh, you can see the URL up here. It's also linked on the YouTube videos if you find the YouTube videos first. Um, so this should give you some information. If you want to find the code, you can find it on GitHub by clicking on this link here. If you want to look at the videos, the channel that we've created is located here on that link. Uh, these are the papers, uh, some of the papers that are related to some of our labs. Uh, and so you can, if you want more information on the details of the labs, you can look at them. If you want links to the tools, you can see here, these are the main tools that we're using, sklearn, Python, TensorFlow, and Weka. You can click on those links and download the software. I've also prepared this calendar if you're a student taking this on your own and you find the videos it might be better to follow this sequence um, in the calendar so that you don't you're not looking at videos kind of in disarray so uh, this might be useful also if you're an instructor uh, you can use this for a one-week intensive course so this is you know about uh, every day full day for five days. All right, so you can find here the, the calendar has links to the videos or it has links to code or it has links to the slides or the lab documents depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Okay, in the future I'm going to add a link here to our virtual machine so you can download the virtual machine and that way you can just start, uh, you know, doing things on the VM. All right, so that's basically the, the website as I wanted to uh, show it. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the slides. So, um, so this, these are the slides. So this is the presentation. This is uh, machine learning for cybersecurity, uh, our introduction uh, slides. All right, so so you can see the learning outcomes. These are the learning outcomes, not so much of these slides, but of the, the, course, the course itself. So upon completion, students should have better understanding of you know, machine, what is machine learning, machine learning approaches, key co uh, concepts in machine learning, such as features and data sets, um, and the need for understanding machine learning to solve cybersecurity problems. Uh, you know, also we're going to, you know, talk about a specific area of machine learning called deep learning. So students should have a, a better understanding of the difference between these two concepts, right? And uh, we will discuss issues related to big data, right? So big data, obviously, if you're going to do machine learning nowadays, you kind of have to do big data as well. All right, so some of the key terms here, uh, I would say, are obviously machine learning, cybersecurity, big data, and deep learning. So really, uh, you have this area that is machine learning, you know, which is within an area of AI, right? AI. And then within it, you have uh, deep learning, right? So deep learning. right, is just a subset of machine learning, actually. So you can see how they kind of, you know, 
one is within the other. Now, big data is really something that had to do with data sets, right? So data sets you know, were of a certain size in the beginning. So let's say machine learning could handle them. But then, uh, you know, as it turned out, they started to get so big that new techniques had to be developed. So what happened was that the machine learning algorithms, and in particular, deep learning algorithms, you know, had, you had to develop tools that could handle really large amounts of data. And so that's where big data kind of falls in. You know, big data is just all this information Right, and then that required the machine learning algorithms and the deep learning algorithms to evolve, right, to become something else that can process that data. So there's a few techniques that we'll need to discuss. And then there's, you know, AI and machine learning can be applied to several areas. So it could be applied to healthcare. So health, right, let's say it can be applied to, um, Other areas, you know, like the traditional re information retrieval, you know, Google, that kind of thing, information retrieval. All right, so that also includes, like, you know, Google, you know, how it applies. Google is obviously, we know, is indexing all the world's websites, right? So, so that means, you know, we index a lot of text. Right, but nowadays uh, these areas are, you know, have been applied to a lot of tools. So, for instance, Alexa. Right, so we know Alexa now. We can talk to it, and that's machine learning. We have self-driving cars, autonomous uh, vehicles, so auto autonomous cars, let's say, right, and so on. So many areas of application, and really, there's no limit. All right, and one of those areas is, of course, cybersecurity. All right, so, so what makes it different? So, you know, there, are, you know, so, so I've I've heard sometimes in, in seminars or or in uh, you know presentations where people will ask the question questions like, okay, so what is the algorithm in machine learning for cybersecurity or you know, or something like that. And the, the answer is that there is no algorithm, no specific algorithm for cybersecurity, right? Instead, you know, cybersecurity, uh, sorry, uh, machine learning or data science is just a tool set. It's a tool set of algorithms, and those algorithms can be applied equally to healthcare, to Alexa, to Google, to self driving cars, or cybersecurity, right? So, really, what's different is the data, right? The data here. Um, is going to be from sources related to cybersecurity issues, right? Like it's going to be, uh, you know, packets, network packets, log files, you know, files themselves, etc. And so that data, just like in healthcare, it might be um, images of cancer or Alexa is text or self-driving cars as sensors, all that all those different kinds of information, which are in different formats and in different sources and different origins, need to be converted into one specific format, right? And that format is what I'm going, what, you know, what I can call, or we can call the vector space model. So the vector space model, right? So that specific um, format is the vector space model. So really all of these can be converted into that. And that is the one common thing, right, or theme, is that they all, regardless of the data set, right, they get converted into the vector space model. And once something is converted into the vector space model, it can be applied to machine learning. So that's really the, what I would say one of the most important things that you need to learn in a machine learning class. The algorithms, you should understand them, but you don't really need to understand them uh, because we have all these tools, right? And so we can just use these tools to use our model, especially once you've done an algorithm, you pretty much use the same code, 
but you will always, whenever you face a new data set, you will always have to go from whatever it is to the vector space model. And so that is the challenge, and that's one of the most important things in the in this topic. So in the in the set of labs that I've uh, that we have in this course, we will have some uh, things that some code that you have to write to convert, uh, let's say, PCAT files, you know, network traffic files into feature vectors or or uh, malware or you know things like that. All right. So that's basically in a nutshell the the terms and kind of the the relationship. All right, so what are some of the tools that we will use in this course? So we will use um, these three machine learning uh, toolkits. Uh, Weka, which is not a Python uh, environment, but it's a GUI. It's a very nice GUI uh, Java-based environment for machine learning. Very useful. Then after that, we will use Python, of course for most of our machine learning. The libraries that we will import into Python are NumPy and Pandas. These two libraries we will use for data pre-processing, for manipulating the data, cleaning the data, etc. These two will be our uh, machine learning. So this will be traditional machine learning. Let's say traditional machine learning. And this is going to be deep learning. Now, tools, these are also tools that are available, Hadoop and Spark. I've included them here, but I will not cover them in the course. All right, so uh, Spark is basically a way to do something like sklearn, but with big data. So the idea is that you can build, let's say, a Hadoop cluster, this one, right, using multiple computers. And then you use, uh, you know, the Spark software kind of on top of that, to kind of distribute the data. Uh, this is very powerful and certainly a lot of people uh, do a lot of great things with it. In my personal preference, I, you know, I think there's the cluster approach and the GPU approach, All right? So I, I happen to like GPUs because you don't have to have uh, that many, right? With a cluster of 30 computers, 40 computers, you basically have to have, you know, 40 computers, 40 regular, <coughs> regular uh, commodity computers, and you have to manage them, and you know, Hadoop is not the friendliest thing always. So, <coughs> whereas with a GPU, it's a little bit more robust. You know, you have one or two or four GPUs on your uh, motherboard, and you certainly have a lot of power, a lot of computational power, way more than, say, with a CPU. So, but, um, in our uh, labs, we will use VMs, right? So the VMs, so, uh, and we will use GP, you know, well, I, I should say, we will use computers that have CPUs and computers that have GPUs to do the machine learning processing. I should also mention that there's TPUs and cognitive processors. These are more advanced uh, chips. Uh, TPUs are tensor processing units that apparently Google rents so you can actually rent them and, and try them out. We will not cover those either in class, but these are, as I said, tools for machine learning. And then there's, of course, AWS. So AWS is, uh, you know, a cloud service, right? And so what's important about this is that, you know, for, you know, let's say you're building a, a, um, a classroom, a virtual classroom, you can rent you know, 30 AWS instances, start them up, and then SSH into them, and then run your code, for instance, and, and do things like that. So that's another important tool that's available uh, that we can use. All right, so uh, now we will use these two approaches to machine learning and also this approach, Weka, so actually three. Weka will be more for, like, prototyping things, so prototype. You know, so data sets that are, aren't too big, whereas the sklearn, you know, will give us a little bit more flexibility because we'll be writing uh, code. And then TensorFlow here will allow us to use deep learning, which are, you know, the, the latest, the best technique currently that gives the best result, and also 
this is, can be used for big data. What's so great about writing code in TensorFlow is that you can write it uh, for the CPU or the GPU, and it really doesn't make a difference. You know, the code does not change just because you're using a GPU or a CPU. But, you know, I don't want to get into too much of that right now. Uh, there are, you know, I have explained this uh, in a lot of detail in other videos, in all the other videos related to um, TensorFlow. All right. So what is machine learning? So obviously if this is our first, um, you know, video, I should provide some definitions. So machine learning basically are methods for predicting, detecting, or grouping data samples based on a model. All right, so the model must be learned with data. All right, so that's why it's not like AI. All right, so AI is a more a broader term, and it doesn't necessarily always learn from data. AI can have heuristic rules, or it can have other ways of you know of learning. Whereas machine learning is more focused on learning on data, all right? So you want to learn on, you know, samples that you have with associated labels. So you want to learn correlations there. Now, as far as the models, the methods can be geometrical or not. Um, and whenever we're talking about geometrical models, these can be based on distance metrics and linear boundaries. So as you will see, uh, you know, some people have said that algorithms are algebra, for instance, and you could say that machine learning is geometry in a way, right? So, um, you know, usually when you think of this idea of the vector space model, you're, you're thinking about points, right? Thinking about point, oops. You're thinking about points and shapes and things like that. You're building lines or curves, you know, in those spaces. So there is, there is that concept of geometry, but that will become, uh, should become clearer as the videos progress. So anyway, so machine learning is this idea of learning from data. Now, why machine learning for cyber? Well, uh, some of the issues are that, you know, machine learning, uh, cybersecurity usually rely, uh, requires, you know, expertise, expert knowledge in a specific area specific type of an attack, but that requires a person to analyze the data for you know, a long time. Uh, and so nowadays there's so much data, there's too much data that you need to start to try to uh, you know, find automation or you know, some, some kind of a, a way of having computers help you with all the hard work. So building models by hand is labor intensive. So machine learning, machine learning could learn models that help you to, you know, find patterns in the data, et cetera, more efficiently. Okay. Now, what is big data? Big data is another one of those terms here. Um, as I said, you know, there's lots and lots of data nowadays. There's terabytes and in any field, not just in cybersecurity, but in healthcare, you know, in social media, etc. And so it's very difficult for one single person to, you know, this to analyze this entire digital universe. Right? And so as you start building algorithms that are smarter, you know, the algorithms can start to find more information in the data. So there's so much data that a single computer with eight RAM and the latest CPU cannot do the work anymore. So you know, your laptop might be good for prototyping a small data set, but once you start looking at really big things, you have to look at other solutions like GPUs and um, dedicated computers. So you need more powerful computers, or better yet, several computers working in parallel, right? So, um, and so that's one of the ideas of big data. So that's why I mentioned like Hadoop, which is this idea of creating clusters. So there's two main approaches. Um, this one, parallel CPUs like Hadoop, right? Or GPUs where you have one GPU, for instance, or, or maybe three or four GPUs on the same motherboard. Um, you know, GPUs have, whereas a CPU can have eight cores, cores 
uh, GPUs can have you know thousands, four thousand cores, right? Now they're different processors. A CPU can do more things, whereas a GPU can only do one specific thing. But it just so happens that that specific thing is one of the key components that you need to do in machine learn in machine learning anyway. Right, which is the matrix multiplication. All right, so here's just a quick uh, snapshot of the different machine learning uh, terms. So one of the, the one of the ones that's the most important is supervised learning. So in supervised learning, we have samples and we have labels. So basically, we have you know uh, network traffic. And we'll say, so this is, uh, you know, traffic, and this is um, an attack, right? So, so I'm just going to say here, network traffic or network, right? So this is network data. This is more network data. But we also have associated with it that this is good. So this is good and this is bad. So the idea with supervised learning is you, that you have labels. So you have labels. All right, you can see here the basic pipeline. So you have our, and we'll do this a lot in the slides and the videos, but you take the data, you divide it into a train set and a test set, right? You're gonna build your model from the train set by selecting a classifier. And then once the model is built here, right, then you're going to take the test data set, apply it to the train model, and this, this test set and its associated labels will go here. So the let's call these the Y test labels. Y test labels. And let's actually not say these are Y tests, but let's say these are Y predicted. Right? So the model takes the X test, runs it through the model, it predicts some Ys, and then you have the correct why so in the evaluation you compare both of these so you'll you'll compare these right and see if they're the same or not right so you do a comparison so that's basically in a nutshell the diagram of um, supervised learning unsupervised learning is where you don't have labels so now you have data let's say the same network data Same network data, right? But there's no labels here, so no labels. So in that case, you can't learn correlations, but you can learn to group things. So for instance, if you have the same you know, vector space model, you have points here, and then you have points here, right? So it, you, know, you might argue, okay, well then, you know, that's one cluster, this one, and then this is another cluster. All right, so you have two clusters. So you, can, you can't really learn a model to predict things necessarily, but you can at least group the, the different points. All right, so that's usually the technique associated with clustering. We, there's a video on this as well in this series on using sklearn and on supervised methods. Okay? Uh, and then other things in machine learning that are important. So there's features and data sets, data pre-processing, and performance metrics. So most of the work that you'll be spending will be here. Right? So a lot of your work will be here. About 80% or, or more of your work in machine learning will be on figuring out how to take the raw data and converting it into the vector space model model so that you can then apply machine learning to it. All right, so a lot of the work is spent there on figuring out what the features could be, what you know, how to get the data set, format the data set, data pre-processing, and then finally your machine learning algorithms need to be evaluated. So it'll be evaluated with performance metrics. There's another video just on performance metrics. It'll talk about the specific metrics that are available 
Um, and then, you know, we'll see how to use them throughout every lab. So every time we do a machine learning uh, lab or, or lecture or problem, we have to evaluate things. Now, what are some of the common machine learning algorithms? So these are the most common ones. Naive Bayes, decision trees, random forest, KNN, linear regression, logistic regressions, neural network support vector machines, and I should add here deep neural networks. Okay. So I have a video on Naive Bayes and KNN. Uh, I didn't create videos on every single algorithm. I do have a video on linear regression, logistic regression, and this one. Support vector machines was a very popular algorithm, considered one of the most powerful back in the day. It's a little less, so now it has been displaced really by deep neural networks. Okay, but uh, so, so we'll certainly spend a lot of time on deep neural networks as they can be implemented in TensorFlow, which is Google's uh, toolkit, right? And then there's uh, all of these, some of these traditional ones, although I won't discuss the specifics of the algorithms, we're still going to use them in, you know, in our program. So we're still going to use the algorithms. So some of these you can actually, without knowing how they work necessarily, you can still use them kind of out of the box. Now, what is deep learning? So deep learning is certainly a very important topic uh, today, and you, you really can't have a machine learning class without discussing it. Uh, so they're basically, deep learning is neural networks. They're basically neural networks with more layers between the input and the output layers. So whereas in the past, a neural network was something like this, right? like that, so just one layer, so this is the input, this is the output, and then this is a one hidden layer, let's say. So this was a neural network, but when you have more than one, then it becomes a deep neural network. So that's pretty intuitive, it just becomes deep neural network. Oops. All right, uh, we will spend, we have several videos on this, labs, lectures, etc., and I will uh, certainly try to explain this as, as best as possible so that you can understand it. It's definitely worth the time, all right? So if you really want to do any real work and you want to have uh, a lot of power and, you know, for big data applications, etc., you really want to understand deep learning and uh, TensorFlow as well. So some concepts that we will need are batch processing that's required so that we can do big data. So we, we no longer can just load the entire data set all at once. We kind of have to load it in batches. And so that's important. Um, so deep learning performs a lot of matrix multiplications, right? In the past, back in the 80s, et cetera, people were trying to use neural networks to solve a lot of problems. But it just so happened that the amount of matrix multiplications that were required for a, a, you know, something that was not even a deep neural network was too heavy, ha, you know, uh, was too, heavy, too much work for a, a simple computer back then. With today's power, in, you know, from 2012 on, or actually from 2007 on, we now have more powerful computers, GPUs, etc. So even though we have these net we are able now to create these networks with multiple layers and all of even though these uh, deeper models have more matrix multiplications we are now able to basically perform these multiplications because we have more computational power like that of GPUs so since 2012 uh, deep neural networks have pretty much outperformed everything else and so you certainly want to add that to your toolkit. As I said, this is just a quick overview, so I'm not really going into the uh, details of deep learning or machine learning at this time, just providing some, an overview of, of the topics and, and some ideas. As I said, we will certainly spend a lot of time 
uh, on deep learning and analyze all the issues there. All right, uh, whenever we talk about machine learning, we'll be talking about a basic machine learning pipeline. And this will be pretty consistent, uh, whether, you know, regardless of what we're using. So we're gonna have data, then we're gonna have to pre-process the data, you know, format it, clean it, et cetera. So clean the data, modify it. Then once we've done that, we're gonna build the vector space model. And I'll, you know, vector space model is basically, and I'll define this a little bit better somewhere else, but it's basically representing uh, our data geometrically. All right, so you wanna think of it that way. You always wanna do that because a lot of the algorithms work that way. They need a data set that is um, in that format and once the data is in that format, you can pretty much easily fit it into all of our solutions. Once you've created the data into the vector space model, you can apply any machine learning algorithm, including deep learning. <laughs> so in particular, so we're using like supervised learning, for instance, <coughs> we, were end, we will end up with uh, when we have annotated, we will end up with a model that predicts some data that can be compared to the real data. And so we can actually measure in the evaluation the performance. So this will be our machine learning pipeline, basically. Okay. And so every problem that we analyze you know, you always want to start there. So what is, you know, ask your, yourself the question, what is the machine learning pipeline? All right, data sets, uh, very important. Um, so data set formats in particular. So some of the common ones are CSV, LibSVM, ARF, etc. ARF is uh, specific to Weka. Right, uh, CSV, I think we're all familiar with CSV. It's basically comma separated or tab separated files. So you can see here we have values separated by commas. LibSVM is a slightly different one where you have um, a format like this. The index and the value, index and the value, index and the value. Uh, and then the advantage of this one LibSVM is that if you're missing values, you don't have to write them into the file. So when you have really large uh, data files, you know, this becomes important. Uh, our file is just a specific format to Weka. So you'll, you'll see me in some of the labs just take, you know, maybe a CSV file, convert it to our format, and then perform some analysis using Weka. And there's many more. These are just some of the ones for most of our class, we will just use CSV format. What is a sample? This is something that we will need to define and it's, it's kind of very abstract, so, but it's very critical, defining the correct sample. So it has to do with the rows of, a you know, of the data. Right? So this is our X data, this is our Y data, the labels. Right? So each row is a sample. But what is it? All right, so that's one of the hardest parts uh, for a data scientist is defining that sample, the features, and so we'll certainly talk about that in in a lot of the videos. So examples are a single item uh, like text, right? So it could be like the bag of words approach. Um, you know, this is popular where you basically represent data as being present or not. So for instance, car. Blue, right? And so is car present in the sentence? Is the word blue present in the sentence? Yes, no. All right, so that's, you know, these are different ways of representing a sample or, or, or indicating what something is a sample. Now, a sample can also be an image, averages in a time window. You know, if you're looking at the number of packets, network packets in an interval of time, from zero to 20 seconds, right? So you might get a lot of packets in that interval. And so how do you represent that as a sample, right? Maybe you take all the packets in that interval and average them out or things like that. But as I said, you know, this is something that is actually quite complex 
and it's uh, it'll be clear once we start doing um, you know specific labs where we take some time to really analyze this. All right. Data sets. There's a lot of data sets out there. Um, in our class, we will use a malware data set. We have a phishing data set. We will use the standard IRIS data set, which is very useful for um, um, just understanding things. Um, we will use the NSL KDD for intrusion detection, IDS. Um, so malware. Oh, we have another one that's. Uh, like network data, like intrusion, uh, Internet of Things, right, and so on, right. So you can have other ones. You know, uh, this ransomware is really part of malware, and so on, right. So these are the the different data sets that are out there. We will use a few of them for our lab assignments. All right. So uh, in machine learning, there's uh, companies uh, you know so this is a little bit about you know what in the industry what who's using machine learning so we know for instance at this point you know Tesla is using it for the auto uh, you know self-driving cars you know Apple Amazon Alexa Google Facebook and we're all familiar with this right so it's pretty common in industry now um, that we see that a lot of companies are using this. It might be less uh, known to people that other companies use uh, machine learning, such as Northrop Grumman, right? You know, they started to use it for their automation of aircraft, uh, you know, defense systems. Uh, Blue Vector, right? Uh, Blue Vector is a company out there that produces. Uh, machine learning based intrusion detection systems and they provide services to banks for instance right so they provide um, these devices they analyze the data so one of the advantages of uh, blue vector is that blue vector will go into a bank will take like you know information is very confidential um, and then they'll be able to build models with machine learning you know, sometimes the data doesn't even have to be viewed by a person, uh, and so it provides some some advantages there. To you know, and uh, so machine learning solutions need to be specific to the challenge, right? And so one of the problems that in the past we've had has been that obtaining data sets is difficult, actually. So you know, I can't go to Bank of America or or one of the or uh, Chase Bank or J.P. Morgan and just ask them for the data and then, you know, go build some machine learning model. So that's very difficult to do because of confidentiality issues. So instead, uh, companies like Blue Vector, for instance, develop these specific tools, you know, like an intrusion detection system that uses machine learning techniques. They'll take it into their, the bank there and then they'll be able to analyze locally that data. So they'll be able to locally analyze the bank's data and build models that are specific to, um, you know, Bank of America's issues, right? So, you know, whatever uh, threats they face or challenges. And so that seems to be a new type of approach to machine learning. Whereas before we wanted to just grab all the data and build machine learning algorithms, it seems at least in, in this space, you know, and in particular, what Blue Vector, one of the things Blue Vector is doing is, you know, they, they're doing more targeted, more specific solutions to those specific companies. And remember that at the end of the day, you know, uh, that, there's that old saying that garbage in, garbage out, right? So it's all about the data. So just because you have a great algorithm, you know, if you have really bad data, you're not going to do anything. So in this case, uh, to really tackle the problems of something like a bank, you know, Blue Vector will, you know, look at that, that specific data and build specific models uh, for the for their clients, basically. So and that's just an example uh, that I, you know, I've been following uh, over the years, Blue Vector of, of how they do things, um, you know, how they apply their machine learning to cybersecurity.
All right. Uh, you know, a few last things. So the, all the code is uh, on my GitHub, so you can click on it and you can get, uh, you know, download the files. As I said, we're also planning to load a copy of the VM, um, and then you know you'll you'll be able to follow along on the VM and the code and do the do the labs and 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 get a feel for the code. All right, as far as the environment, um, you know we will use a, a, a virtual machine uh, for some of the labs, um, so you can use any of the latest versions you can download if once we post RVM RVM you will need TensorFlow and sklearn um, if you're using a Windows environment you could use Weka but Weka also runs on Mac and Linux and then we'll also use uh, AWS and some, you know AWS for remoting into some GPU boxes so one of the labs uh, involves big data it's like a million records or something and so pretty much the same thing as, as everything else except that we can't run it on our laptop certainly not on our virtual machine but once we use our AWS we should be able to um, run it now if you want to build your own GPU box I provided uh, some information about that in the book and also here in the in this slide so you, this is some basically uh, specifications of um, a, a physical box for TensorFlow for deep learning, right? So key at, at the heart of it is you need a, a GeForce GPU or Titan or something like that. And then, you know, some, you know, quite a bit of RAM, I would recommend if you want to expand. In the future, a motherboard that can hold more than one GPU. And the minimum cost of it will be around between $1,500 to $2,000. However, you don't have to buy this for this class because you could just use the VM and you'll pretty much be able to do everything. If you want to do the, uh, the big data lab, for instance, you would have to maybe rent an AWS instance and, of a GPU and do it there. All right. And that should be straightforward. All right, so in summary, this is just you know, the, the first video, an introduction basically to the course and kind of not too much detail, just overview of all the topics, all the keywords. Um, but basically this, you know, this course will be an introduction to machine learning and deep learning for applications uh, to cybersecurity problems. So discussion of machine learning and deep learning. There will be discussion of the cybersecurity data sets. So the data sets are specific to the cybersecurity. The environment I already discussed, you can follow along pretty much the entire course just with a virtual machine, or if you have a Mac, you can install TensorFlow on your Mac, etc. There's even, uh, I know nowadays, a, um, an option to install TensorFlow on Windows, so uh, that's also an alternative. All right, and then obviously here, we'll, discuss, uh, we'll be discussing the concepts of machine learning, traditional machine learning, you know, data sets, data pre -pro the machine learning pipeline, basically. All right, so that uh, concludes this video. All right, and then, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy this series of videos.